All right, here we, we're going to be talking about a, uh, an ELE brand generator alternator starter test stand. Uh, this unit was originally built for the, for the U.S. government to the highest standards and is full of many features uh, and, and safety precautions. Um, the right side of the machine is the alternator and generator test, test portion. Uh, and the left side is the, the starter test portion. Uh, regarding the alternator controls, um, this entire row is the, the 24 volt section, and this is the 12 volt section. Um, and then here you have the, the fault indicator light. Um, section and that'll tell you if if the load bank fan is not working, if there's low airflow, um, if the drive motor blower has a problem, or the drive motor inverter, um, over temperature, all that's covered um, with the warning lights. Um, we'll get back to that after we after we start running a test. Um, over on the alternator, the drive end, um, you can mount the alternator in two different manners. As you can see here, this is a belt driven alternator, so it's mounted in a vise and then driven off the spindle with a belt. Um, this vise has adjustments in the X and Y direction, and it's very easy to line up the pulleys. Um, and then you just you clamp both sides. You clamp one side of the alternator with a pin. There's five different pin sizes for different size alternators, and the top of it um, is just hard fixed. Then with this variable, uh, this variable hold bar, um, the the speed is picked up off of the pulley on the alternator um, with a light sensor, and it's on a it's on like a gooseneck that you move over and you have to just put a line, you just put a, like a white line on the, on the pulley and it picks that speed up. Uh, the other way to mount an alternator is a direct mount where you would remove this spindle and mount it directly onto this flange. And because of that ability to direct mount, you know, a large alternator, or generator, the motor has to spin, the drive motor in this test cabinet has to spin very fast. So it's a 30 horsepower, 12,000 RPM drive motor, which is driven with the variable frequency drive, and you can change the speed on the control panel. Uh, currently, this is a small 30 amp alternator, so we have it hooked up to this Canon plug, where it's the, the 100 amp um, plug. Uh, if you're testing something larger, you use these cam lock receptacles uh, with cables that you plug in here. And this, this unit will test up to 300 amp 12 volt alternators and 600 amp 24 volt alternators. Um, up here is the various uh, hookups for the, like the field. Um, to power to flash the field and also to check the um, to check the amp draw um, and the, and the bus voltage. So currently, all we're doing is we're just using the UUT uh, ignition line to flash the the field in this particular alternator. All right, so we'll go over to the to the starter side. Uh, the starter. Starter test is a little more um, simple. Um, so you have the basic, the starter volts, um, the amps, and the RPMs. And again, the RPMs use a uh, use a light pickup that you just put, you just move it over to the drive, uh, what it's going to be picking up, and you have to just make a, a white mark on the actual on the spinning gear. Um, you just lay the, the starter in a cradle here and you clamp it down. 
and these also use the cam lock connectors. Um, it's very simple to hook the starter uh, side up, and then you just have one one wire that goes to the the solenoid. All right, so we'll do we'll go back to the alternator side and and run an alternator test. Uh, the first the first thing you do is you select which voltage it is. Uh, it's a 24 volt alternator. You can see it's selected up here. Then you select if it's negative or positive ground. Most of it's negative. Um, then the drive motor rotation. You know which way it's going to spin, and then we can start the drive motor. So we'll select clockwise, and then start the drive motor. Now that's the, the load bank fan is turning on, and then a couple seconds later, the drive motor starts spinning. So the motor is spinning at 700 RPM, but the actual, the actual, the pulley on the alternator is turning at 1300 because of the reduction, and that's being picked up with the light sensor. So the next step is you have to flash the field on the alternator, so you turn on the DC power supply, and we turn that up to about 28 volts. Now we see that the alternators produce the 28 volts. We can turn the power supply back off, and now the alternator is running. So here are your load steps for the load bank. The lowest load step is 5 amps. So you turn it to 1 and it applies 5 amps to the alternator. So it started about three, now it's an eight, so that's five. Uh, because this unit can, can test such large alternators up to 600 amps, these other load steps are much larger. But we're only going to be using this because it's a 30 amp alternator. So we can add another five, and we see that the voltage is dropping, indicating that this particular alternator has a problem with the voltage regulator. And then once you have the load selected, you can start a timer over here and just let the unit run for a lot of time. So here on the starter side, you know, um, it's a little, little simpler. You have a, a coarse and fine voltage adjust. So we have uh, this particular starter is a 12 volt starter. So you select uh, 12 volts here, but to get exactly 12 volts, you move these, these selector switches, and so we got 12 volts there. Um, just to test, you just press this button. Drawing 180 amps and moving at 7,000 RPM. So the unit is actually pretty easy to use and it has tons of features. And built to last a long time.
the 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 cover you see above it with the with the lights on it, they flip down to cover all the controls to protect them. Uh, we currently have some of the panels off. Um, the unit gets sealed up with them on, and the alternator test side. Um, that hood is supposed to come down and be shut during testing um, to prevent any any broken belts from flying off. 